Hey guys, movie fan here to talk to you about something that I just discovered recently. And it's basically about the legendary airship, the Hindenburg. I know it's unusual for me to talk about something like this, but as you already know, I'm a history buff and I find this stuff to be rather interesting. And plus, you know, there are some things that need to be talked about, even if it's a little out of my wheelhouse, as it were. Now, I'm sure a lot of you young kids are asking, what is the Hindenburg? Well, the Hindenburg was a giant airship made by Nazi Germany back in the 30s. It was actually a very popular form of transportation back in the day. In fact, the airship was so successful that a lot of people were thinking that airships would actually replace airplanes. Pretty much it was the in thing at the time. And then on May 6, 1937, she came into Lakehurst, New Jersey to dock and drop off some passengers when the unthinkable happened. It burst into flesh. Get it started. Get it started. It's right and it's rising. It's rising terrible. Oh my, get out of the way, please. It's burning, bursting into flames and, and it's falling on the morning fast and all the folks between us. This is terrible. This is the one of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's, 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 it's like 20, oh, four or five hundred feet into the sky. And it, it's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen. The smoke and the flames now and the flame is crashing to the ground. Not quite to the morning mass. All the humanity and all the fans are just speeding around it. At that time, this really was the worst disaster to ever come into light since the Titanic. And that's why she's been called the Titanic of the Skies. Probably one of the most unbelievable facts about this is that there were 97 people on that Zeppelin and only 36 were killed. Well, believe it or not, some new footage was discovered not too long ago, back in 2014. And it would not really come to the masses until this year. And that is this footage right here. The shocking thing about this footage is it was ignored for 84 years. It was first brought up in 2014 on the Pennsylvania news, but even I didn't hear about this until just now. I'm not kidding. This was absolutely unbelievable that the news media actually ignored this footage back in the day. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking they covered it up. No, they didn't because they tried giving it to the news back then. And they wouldn't buy, they wouldn't listen, they wouldn't do anything with it. They just didn't care. Why? Well, that's uh, one of the big questions that I'm going to have to debate with a little later. What shocks me is the fact that this meant nothing to them. The importance of this footage is it's shot at a completely different angle. The legendary footage that most of us know was, well, shot roughly from about here. You know, just about from this area where, you know, you see a crash. And there were several pictures taken on the port side. Probably this one right here would be very memorable, as well as this one. But this one is taken from roughly about, uh, let's say, here. So, and it shows so much more bigger detail that we did not realize. You can actually see the tail bend in, and she's even twisting because of the heat. This is very important to the history of the crash. Not to mention, it gives a better perspective as to what happened to her. Because even now, it's still a mystery as to why she crashed in the first place. The only thing that we do know is that the hydrogen must have caught fire in some way. For those of you who don't know, the ship was filled with hydrogen gas, which is highly flammable. The footage alone proves how flammable it really is. That's the only thing they know for sure. The one thing that no one has figured out still is what caused the hydrogen to go off. Well. This was a big Nazi symbol, and tensions were high in Europe. World War II was around the corner, so many thought it was sabotage. Because, you know, this was a big Nazi symbol. It wasn't a huge stretch of the imagination that someone might have put a bomb in there. That was ruled out because they really could not find any evidence of it. No evidence of a bomb or anyone having tampered with the ship. There was also a theory that she might have gotten struck by lightning. The theory comes around because there were storms in the area. So it makes sense. However, all the eyewitnesses disproved that because every one of them saw no lightning hit the ship. So that was ruled out as well. Right now, the only theory that seems to stick is the theory that because of the electrical storms in the area, there was a lot of static built up on the ship and a spark ignited the hydrogen. We will probably never know for sure. 
However, this gives a better picture as to what happened when she crashed. And it saddens me that they completely ignored this film for 84 years. So now comes the question, why was this ignored? The first explanation I can think of is this was uncharted waters here because believe it or not, this was the first time that a disaster was actually caught on film. So it's possible that they did not see the importance of getting shots from multiple angles because nowadays when a disaster is caught on film, they try to get as much footage as possible from multiple angles because every little angle could help solve the mystery as to what happened. So they probably didn't realize the importance of getting that footage from that angle. The second and most likely reason I could think of is the fact that the man who filmed this was not part of the newscast. He was not a cameraman who worked for CBS or the BBC or anything like that. So they didn't take the footage seriously. They just wanted all the glory for themselves. This may sound ridiculous, but let's get real for a minute here. Back then, they were pretty much always hot-dogging for a big story. And there's no doubt that this was a huge story. Nowadays, the news just tries to tell the story. That's about it. But back then, reporters wanted to be the first ones to get the big scoop. That's how they became famous, like Walter Cronkite or Tom Brokaw, because they were there to see the whole thing and to shoot the whole thing and to tell the whole story. Obviously, an amateur shooting footage from a home movie camera, they wouldn't want that to horn in on them getting the fame. And that's the sad truth. Fortunately, now we can see it on YouTube because now it's come to light. The sad thing is, it was pretty much too little, too late. And I'll tell you this, the people who restored this footage, they did a superb job. In fact, they said that the company who did this actually restores footage for the Library of Congress and the National Archives. Quite frankly, I'm impressed with their work because, you know, the footage is over 84 years old and it looks like it was shot yesterday. In fact, I would say this is HD quality. I'm not kidding. Normally I bash HD, but this is a very big exception. They did such a good job. I hope they can make some free time to cover some other footage that have been going around like the infamous Bigfoot footage. I'm sure you've all seen this footage before. And you know, about 10 or 20 years ago, they tried to enhance it to see if they could get better detail on this to prove or disprove that this footage is real. Well, obviously, if they did this good of a job with this footage alone from a home movie camera from 1937, I think it's a safe bet they could do a superb job with this footage from the 60s. This footage is very important to the sake of history because this disaster should never be forgotten. So what do you guys think? Do you think I'm right about uh, as to why the footage was ignored all this time? Did you find this interesting? Feel free to let me know. This is Movie Fan, signing off.